self-discipline. Remember that word. Discipline. Discipline your mind. Hello and welcome to Sobriety Made Simple. My name is Timothy Martin. Today we're going to be discussing self-discipline. Self-discipline is a skill that can be practiced and improved. It involves deciding what you want to achieve, setting clear expectations and goals for yourself, and avoiding distractions that might pull you away from them. Here are some tips to help you improve your self-discipline. One, concretize your motivation. Just as a solid start date can help make your start strong, making the effort to write down the reasons why you want to improve can give you clarity in what you're doing. Concretize, by the way, means to make an idea real by giving it specific or definite form. To set clear goals, decide what you want to achieve with clear expectations for yourself. Writing down these reasons why you want to improve can give clarity to what you're doing. Give me an example. For example, you wish to stop drinking. That is your goal. That is your expectation. That is what you wish to do. Or continuing to live your life alcohol-free. That is your goal. That is your expectation. Okay? Definite, precise. Number two, create habits that support your goals. Habits are powerful tools that help you stay on track. Start small and build up gradually. We'll talk more about habits in just a minute. Three, avoid distractions. Distractions can really pull you away from your goals. Your phone, for example. Put them away and focus on your task at hand. Develop what I call tunnel vision. If you stay in the moment and don't think too much about the past or future, stay on target and you get things done faster. And that builds more self-confidence and more self-esteem. Confidence. Number four, take care of your health. A healthy body and mind can help you stay focused and motivated. Get enough sleep. Eat good, exercise regularly, stay hydrated. Five, remove temptations. Self-control is often easiest when abiding to the old saying, out of sight, out of mind. Removing all temptations and distractions from the environment is a crucial first step when working towards self-discipline. If you're going to try to have better self-control of your drinking, rid your life of all things alcohol in nature. Clean out your house, clean out your refrigerator. Take down posters, pictures, old clothes, remove numbers from your cell phone. Get away from people that you associate with alcohol. Stop going to places that remind you of alcohol. Get rid of objects like beer mugs, koozies, even little things like bottle openers, believe it or not. They were triggers for me. Anything that reminds you of drinking, ditch the bad influences. I know that's easier said than done, and trust me, it was tough for me to lose those phone numbers, and get away from certain people. Get away from me. But do what has to be done, okay? Set yourself up for success. Six, don't wait for the time to feel right. Improving your self-discipline means changing your normal routine, which can be very uncomfortable and awkward at first. Habit behaviors are traced to a part of the brain called the basal ganglia, a portion of the brain associated with emotions, patterns, and memories, okay? Here's a picture of the basal ganglia. Remember, this is where emotions, patterns, and memories are stored. Okay, this is very important. Now, decisions, on the other hand, are made in your prefrontal cortex. Here's a picture of the prefrontal cortex in your brain. Now, this is a completely different area. When the behavior becomes habit, we're using our basal ganglia. We stop using our decision-making skills or prefrontal cortex, but instead function on autopilot. Okay, autopilot means basal ganglia. Therefore, breaking bad habits and building new habits not only requires us to make active decisions, it's going to feel wrong because you're not doing what you normally do. You're thinking about it. You're doing something different. Your brain's going to resist the change in favor of what it's been programmed to do. The solution is to embrace the wrong, okay? Acknowledge that it will take time for your new regime to feel right or natural. Just keep chugging along and it will happen. It's a very important thing to remember this. This is how we're going to break those bad habits, by understanding what's happening in our brain. I'm going to use a term here. It's called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity allows the brain to create new pathways, and this enables the ability to change our behavior. Imagine when a street or freeway entrance has been blocked. Your GPS may suggest an alternate route. The alternate route may be unfamiliar and take longer to navigate, but it will still lead you to your destination. You're not on autopilot anymore. Remember, autopilot, basal ganglia, thinking prefrontal cortex. 
Now, how do you achieve neuroplasticity? Neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity. What? What the fuck? Neuroplasticity is best achieved through repetition or mass practice. The more you practice a certain task, the stronger your neural connection becomes. The brain adapts to your experiences. Therefore, the brain encounters certain experience or action repeatedly. The pathway is reinforced and strengthened. The longer you go without drinking, your brain will adapt to that non-drinking way of life until it becomes a habit. That's why self-discipline is key, especially at the beginning. You have to learn to use those new neural pathways to think with your prefrontal cortex and not your basal ganglia. Okay, to do what seems weird at first, but it will eventually become a habit. Seven, give yourself breaks, okay? Just because you decide to do some major changing doesn't mean your new regime needs to be exhausting and hardcore. In fact, not giving yourself a little wiggle room often results in failures, disappointments, and giving in to your old ways. When practicing self-control, schedule specific breaks and reward yourself. Give yourself pats on the back. Acknowledge that you're doing something great for yourself. Give yourself some self-talk, okay? Tell yourself you're doing good. Tell yourself that you love yourself. I know this might seem weird, but it does help. Eight, forgive yourself and move forward. Instituting a new way of thinking doesn't always go according to plans. You will have ups and downs. Sometimes you're going to fail. The key is to keep moving forward. When you have a setback, acknowledge what caused it and then continue forward. Moving forwards, not back. It's so easy to get wrapped up in guilt, anger, or frustration, but these emotions aren't going to help build or improve self-discipline. Instead, use the hiccup, see it as a learned experience for the future. Forgive yourself and get back in the saddle as soon as possible. The longer you're off your game, the harder it's going to be to get going in a positive direction. And having self-discipline is a major factor in staying the course. Okay, keeping yourself off of alcohol. You have to be able to do this. You have to be able to do the majority of the work yourself. A good support structure is great, but at the end of the day, it's going to be up to you. Remember the things that I told you about your brain. Remember how it works. This is a very, very helpful step. It helped me a lot to understand how I was thinking and how I could work to change it. If you know what's going on inside of your head, then you know how to deal with it, okay? Knowledge is key. Continue on your path, okay? I hope this video helped you out, and please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. It helps me keep making these videos. Remember, hang in there, okay? You got this. You can do it. We'll see you next time. Bye.